So if you've watched any of my painting videos, you will know that I really, really enjoy using contrast paints, but Army Painter have brought these out, these Army Painter Speed Paints, and I decided I was gonna pick up the starter set and paint up the latest set by Highlands Miniatures just to see how these compare to things like the contrast paints. Now for me, I just love how quick and easy it is to get the base layer onto the models using things like contrast paints, and these kind of promise to be a very similar thing. So I'll be really interested to see what the results are compared to things like contrast paints. Do they do it better? Because obviously these are so much cheaper, and especially I know in places like the US, contrast paints are a lot more expensive than your standard paints. So if this can save some money and I can swap out some of my favorite colors from contrast paints using these speed paints, well then I'm sold. So I'm gonna open these up and have a quick look and then we'll get on with the painting video. So I got cracking with my Highlands Miniatures models and I tried to stick with a similar color theme to what I've used in the past, which is like these yellows and reds, which is good considering that the starter set of these speed painters doesn't really include a massive amount of colors. So I was pretty limited with that. Now, the first one that I tried was their flesh color because I absolutely love the Gilliman's flesh for the contrast paint. Now, this isn't gonna be a video where I directly compare all of the different colors. I'll probably go into a deeper dive in another video, but obviously it is kind of on my mind with them being some of my favorite paints. And the first thing I noticed when I started to use these speed paints was that they're a lot more watery. They felt quite like I was using a wash, just a thicker wash anyway. So it was putting more color onto my model and obviously filtering through. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It made them a little bit easier to work with, so I could kind of slap it all onto my brush and then get it onto the model really quickly. But it did mean that you had to be more controlled. So with contrast paints, I found that they kind of stick to where you put them. So if you put them near an edge or anything like that, they normally stay against that edge, but they don't flow off into the crevices and stuff quite so much. With the speed paints, they really do. If you overload your model, it's gonna to start to run everywhere. So gravity plays a very big part in applying these, at least that I found in my experience. So if I put them on like the top of the body, for example, and they were just above a belt or a waistline, if I put too much on it, it would start to leak over and go into the belt and everything. So that's absolutely something worthwhile bearing in mind as you're using it. Try not to overload your brush, but you don't want to underload your brush because otherwise you don't get the great effect. So as I started to kind of get used to these and get a bit more control of it, I went for a few different colors. So I did the yellow on the trousers and I've got to say this is one of my favorite yellows. I really, really, again, like the contrast paint yellow and I think it looks fantastic at times. But one thing that I've noticed that is a massive, massive difference with these speed paints is they come out so much smoother. Now when you first apply them, they can look a little bit patchy and a little bit off. However, as they dry, it just, I don't know, it must all kind of like filter into all the different bits and it comes out with a really smooth finish. Now, depending on what kind of miniature that you're painting, this could be make or break. So if you are doing something that's got a lot of armor on it, a lot of cloth that isn't really folded and it's got a lot of large areas, for example, then these speed paints are really, really good for that. So like on the yellow trousers here, the consistency over the top was fantastic. And I really, really like the way it came out. You can probably tell I'm just kind of rambling on about it. I was that impressed by them. Unlike with contrast paints, where sometimes if you have a bit too much on there and it pools, you don't get those tide marks like you do with contrast paints. So it's a really nice look at the end of the day. The one thing that I didn't see quite as much is I didn't see as many highs. There was a good amount of shadow and it applied a lot of those lows and mid-tones, but I didn't really see too much in terms of the highs. But again, that might just be on the basing that I've gone for. As I quickly fired through my first model, I moved on to a red. And the thing that I started to notice at this point was how much longer they take to dry than some like contrast paints. Now contrast paints don't dry particularly quickly, but what I found in my experience is that I can normally move from one set of colors to the next without letting it dry for too long. The speed paint, I definitely had to stop at some points and let them dry. So what I was finding was that the colors were starting to mix together. I guess where it was starting to flow and just kind of spread out a little bit more, it was becoming a bit more of an issue. Now, if you're batch painting an army, then that's not really too much of an issue because you can just go through one thing of colors and it didn't really bother me later on when I was doing all the flesh on all of these models and then moving on to all the trousers for these models, for example. It was pretty easy to get around that issue, but if you're painting one single model, it might become a bit of an issue. After painting up my first model, I was pretty impressed with the results and then I moved on to batch painting the whole 
whole lot. Like I said, I did the flesh and I started to do the trousers and then like the waistcoat things that they had on and then the browns and pretty much all of these colors looked good. I was really happy with the starter set that I've got here. Now, the one thing that I will say is I was limited in terms of the colors I had available, but actually that made for a really fun experiment, especially for this video. So I'm to paint up quite a lot of units and try to differentiate between, I guess, the browns and everything else. And one thing I found in the past is when you've got like the whole set of contrast paints like I've got, you can sometimes sit and go, well, maybe I'll use this shade of brown and then I'll switch to this shade of brown for the straps and then I'll switch to this shade of brown for the... And you just get stuck with all these different colors and they can make it a bit of a chore. Having literally just the colors from the starter set to work with made this kind of interesting actually and I had a lot of fun because obviously I was limited. For example, going with this guy who's laughing with his hands on his belly, um, I would never have gone for a purple coat and for the main set of gunners when I get around to finishing those off, they're also going to have purple coats or maybe grey coats, I'm not too sure yet. But the purple is something I wouldn't have chosen before. The grey hats, for example, I probably would have gone for something like a black or maybe a darker brown. But having that limited option of colours made this quite a fun choice. And I definitely recommend, give it a go. Maybe pick just a few colours and stick to those and they're the only colours you're allowed to use. When I moved on to the horses, I was pretty shocked by how bad the grey looked as I started to apply it to the model. It just looked really patchy and I kind of figured there's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to get this horse looking anywhere near decent. However, after I left it for a good amount of time and let all of those paints kind of, I suppose, run together and knit together or whatever we're going to call it, and then it dried off, I came back and it was a really, really smooth and consistent finish. And actually, I was really impressed and I think it looks a little bit better than some of the results I've achieved with contrast paints in the past on something like that. And it comes back to that whole thing of a large, smoother surface. It seems to do such a good job on that. So as I got to the end of this, I really, really enjoyed using the speed paints. There were a few big frustrations there that I just didn't really enjoy and some things that I absolutely love about them. Now, the first thing I will cover off is I hate the dropper bottle. Now, I like it for normal paints. It makes so much sense for these. I like to just be able to dip my brush and then just get to painting. So it was kind of frustrating and it's odd because normally I hate the Citadel paint pots but in this case, I kind of wish they were reversed. It's really odd, and I guess it's a preference thing, but I don't like having the dropper bottles for these. What made it more frustrating is as I got the paints onto my palette, they all look damn near identical. So when they're on the palette itself, they all look just dark, and it's kind of hard to tell which one it is. And I, the amount of times I almost dipped my brush in the wrong thing just drove me absolutely crazy. The other thing that I wasn't a fan of was the drying time. These are really wet paints and very runny paints. And you kind of expect that, but they're a lot, lot, lot wetter and runnier than I expected them to be. If you overload your brush and you don't have good brush control, you can make an absolute mess of your model. So just bear that in mind. You do need to be careful with these. Far more careful, at least in my opinion, than you do with the Citadel Games Workshop contrast paints. And then obviously the fact is you've also got to be patient and let those dry. If you start to get into it too soon, you're going to start to blend your colours and get those mixed up and make another big mess. However, the smoothness of these things is really, really good. And it is one thing that I dislike about the contrast paints, the fact that they can leave a lot of tide marks and sometimes it just looks a bit messy and you have to go over and correct it. But the Army Painter Speed Paint, this smoothness is just fantastic and you've probably gathered I like that considering how much I've gone on about it but it really is impressive the results they've managed to achieve. I would say depending on the type of miniature that you're painting this could be a pro or a con so if you are painting stuff like a beast that's got a lot of fur or an animal that's got loads of folds and everything else contrast paints are great because they get some really dark shadow in there some fantastic mids and some really good highlights as well all as part of that one paint. The army paints like I said it seems to have good shadows good mids but not particularly great highlights and again because of that smoothness it doesn't normally look as good at least in some of the ruffled areas so that's just something to bear in mind and again I'll do a deeper dive on that so I'll maybe get together some like Skaven type models and just loads of different types of beasts maybe some things that have lots of armor on there and do like contrast painted versions of them and fairy versions of them fairy versions speed painter versions of them so let me know if that's something you want to see in the future and the final big big pro is the cost. These cost so much less than the contrast paints, which is a big, big win. So I've got to say, these are a great thing to maybe kind of pick and choose some of your favorite colors, have a look at some YouTube videos, maybe some reviews that are out there as well. Go through the lines and see which colors stand out, which people recommend and stuff like that. And you can probably start to replace a lot of your contrast paints with these. 
I've had an absolute blast painting up this Highlands miniatures set from February. They look fantastic and I've got to say they've come out looking really, really good. Considering this was my first attempt of using these speed paints, I think they've done a good job and I'll definitely have some more experimenting going on in the future. This starter set by Army Painter is probably worthwhile giving a go. It's not going to break the bank and it'll give you enough range of colours and variety just to sink your teeth into to see whether or not you want to go with this type of painting, whether or not you like them. If you're a fan of contrast paints then you're probably going to find something to like about these ones and at this price point they are a really good alternative and an extra tool to have in your belt if you're going to be doing a lot of miniature painting especially quickly like I do. So I hope you've enjoyed that video if you have hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more 3D printing and painting content in the future and again let me know if you want me to do any comparisons between this and the contrast paints as well. More than happy to maybe print off a whole bunch of stuff and see what sort of results we can get using the different paints and comparing them to each other. In the meantime stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye!